Thank you all. Um, this next segment, I'm going to speak to you a bit about community engagement and different methods that I've experienced, um, but also approaches that we can start to think of, whether it's digitally or in person, when going on a community engagement endeavor. So uh, this is just imagery again of engaging. My point for this slide was that no matter how much digital occurs, the in-person is where you see the real energy and shine come through. Um, not to say it can't happen. I mean, this is digital right now and uh, has a good vibe, but always, always find ways to capture the lessons from the in-person engagements that you plan. So, you know, we hear the term capacity building a lot, right? Um, but in my work, I try to really make it very clear that it's more capacity development that occurs when we do local engagement. Um, and capacity development encompasses building capacity where there was not a skill before and we need to, to add that in, or there wasn't a human resource before and we need to, to make sure that that's available in our planning of our projects or even capacity sharing where the, it exists, but in a different location. And that can happen here where a filmmaker may help, a, a photographer may help a filmmaker, may help a visual artist. That's an example. And also in creating equity in the process of doing um, a project for the persons involved. So capacity development is an inclusive approach that assumes um, the persons involved should own, design, implement, and operate their own processes and empower and have empowerment and self-determination in their decisions. But it gets used in the international space a lot. And so like when we approach um, online design projects to build communities of practice, we, we, we follow a human-centered design approach. So we spend a lot of time in the early engagement um, trying to understand and do the research needed to um, for the space. And I know artists, you guys, you know, always, some of you always walk with a sketchbook, you know, when creativity holds you, you write it down, you jot it down. And, you know, I, I know, I, I, I've seen a lot of friends who are artists do quite a heavy amount of research before engaging in a project and active research. Sometimes they become part of that project too. And, as we build the communities, um, we, we wanna test, you know, this is more of a tech curve, but we, we try to test the product that we have with our group. And we encourage you all to test the projects that you come up with, with each other. And, and, and so become that beta group for, for your colleagues. And, you know, a big trend in, in the, in this space now is data visualization. I would say that's a skill that as artists, you have a greater leaning towards and it's in high demand right now, especially since the pandemic, everyone wants to engage better. I saw this cool data visualization of migration online um, where it, it showcases the flows of migration from different regions. I did also notice that there was no Caribbean designation. We're usually lumped in with Latin America and the Caribbean in international speed. But you wanna understand your data through the research. You wanna identify the message that you wanna clearly communicate with, with your visualizations. You want to, to really think through how will the audience interact with this? Um, what questions might they have? So as I mentioned, design thinking is not linear, it's, it's iterative. So the empathy phase is where you understand your, your audience. And then the definition is kind of like the hypothesis. You have an idea, you test out the design, and then you, you loop back to, to did that hypothesis work? Did that product work? Um, and you continue to ideate and prototype and test. And it, this goes on even as you have a product launched. 
many of you have your business launched and you have to test out new ways to engage the market or new ways to find supplies um, to think about your products. Um, some of you may put them up virtually. How do you get the numbers? How do you build a community around your brand as well? So like I said, a lot of governments and businesses will have a need for your, for your skill set, right? They want to know because they are spent, they try to do, I find in the space, they will try to do everything and we cannot. And so they want to better meet their customer needs in when it's a political, when it's government, they want to have public support or even a service for climate, like uh, utility, electric utilities. They want public support because, you know, it lights go off. People can be like, my man, <laughs> you know, like they, they are ready to cuss the utility and it might not even be the utilities challenge. So they want to have artists to help showcase why that is and what what they're and and better um, build their brand and artists can also help with increasing transparency around a process or a technology um, and and the process of statelessness and and in doing that you know you you can help with the exchange of quality information that might be time sensitive how do you best create spaces that communicate the 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 challenge of uh or or the exit strategy say for like a tidal wave having having art that would signify what to do so that it unconsciously sinks into the community and i've seen that here in barbados on the east coast so in your role as artists you need to inform so so how will you engage your community so sharing your intent up front for your project you want to consult persons who are already experts in the space or have key insights when going into community. Um, you want to involve your participants. So there might be ish challenges like language barriers. You want to make sure that you're being as inclusive as possible in your process. Um, and then are there opportunities in your work where you can co-create or actively have active participation um, to help the participants create, achieve their goal through your art. Um, an example of this is um, doing a film now where we're working with bee farmers and, you know, even just the process of registering the business where they can focus on, 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 on what they do best and help that and help the business come along along with the story is an example. And what, what, what does that product that you create with your art, does it create value beyond your engagement with your subject? Some of you might not be engaging directly with a person, but with an idea. And can it influence greater business? And this is what, you know, like the bank would be interested in for sure. <laughs> So, so there's a few things to remember that, that, you know, you gather your initial inputs, you have your hypothesis and you target a particular subset of the community, but are, do you know all the microcosms within that community that you're targeting? And are you a member of that microcosm? And if so, you have a unique voice and check your position relative to others interacting within that space. And then really understand that there are the formal networks and the informal networks. So what are the rules of engagement for moving in between these formal and informal networks? And always manage expectations with clear communication and always work on improving communication um, through your art and through your engagement. And you know, from the environmental standpoint, when engaging around the topic of statelessness, you know, like when you're finished this incubator and say this piece does become part of your business, um, you know, like you're you're gonna want to go and fundraise so that you guys are benefiting from creating your your establishing your 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 op, your organization. So make sure that your scopes are realistic 
if their opportunities go for them. You guys are go-getters since you did sign up for this. There are a lot of persons who this was sent to and they 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 let it pass by. And that is that's fine. But um one of the things that the bank told us is like there are opportunities and people don't sign up. And so more often than not, what I've seen on my end is there people can get access to money um to do their work, but it's it's kind of like why why should I try sometimes? And sometimes life happens, right? And as much as you can partner and collaborate, I think you can have a stronger engagement in your community. And when thinking of your business, think about how you your business is structured that it feeds in back to those sustainable development goals and that corporate and social responsibility. Within your corporate and social responsibility, what I mean by that is, is it that you know with every with every um, ten of these shirts designed and sold, um, a percentage of that goes towards planting trees or you, you know like looking at mechanisms to really form that ethos um, for your. Sorry, I just have a message here. Yeah. Yeah, Sonia said a lot of the grants and funding opportunities need to be done through nonprofits or institutions, not too many different independent entities. And yes, that is actually a flaw. You know, I see I see a lot of persons that have to go to the States and Canada and go outside to look for angel investors in their work. And that's something that, you know, maybe something that we raise to the bank on how do you get, you know, private investment with people willing to take a risk on artists even more. And as we go through this, you know, how, how can statelessness encourage um, greater, greater um, business synergies in the future and innovation? And um, yes, John, uh, I'm gonna share this presentation with you. How can you evaluate, oh, right. So how, how are we gonna evaluate um, your, your works when it comes to community engagement or it comes to environmental? Um, you know, there's the aspect of, I, you know, the science and the data, does it demonstrate climate, climate from that perspective? How are you using your visual arts? Um, are you telling a story? Um, how, how, how does it make people empathize um, with your audience or the story you're trying to tell? Um, then from your end, can you, can you form business from your project? And this is not to put pressure on you. This is just some parameters where we would look at um, to, 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 to think about work. Um, what is the call to action? Always having a call to action can spur on greater investment, greater collaboration. So, and, and, you know, think through your strategy, like what is impact, you know, is it, is it something measurable? If it's just to create and express, that's fine too. Um, I think sometimes that is something the most powerful art, but in helping each other, I want you guys to help each other to, to refine and, and bring and, and bring bring out the best of each other for this work. Um, and so like, finally, I'm gonna put you into the groups again. And I want, want you to guys to share the goal for your art, but, but for this session, I want you to think through how you're gonna approach your project. If you have an idea of what your project is already, think through how you're gonna engage persons or communities through while approaching your project and share that with your team and have that discussion. Is that clear? Hands up if it's clear. Um, any questions before we go into groups? Okay, I think we're good then. Um, so I'm just gonna sign you back into these groups.
Do we stay the same or do we change? Um, you can you can stay the same. There might be some added persons in your group because some others came on, but. And by that, um, thinking about whose voice gets to be heard um, when leading um, community charges um, and how, you know, privilege and money and race and education play into that, as well as like the internalized um, notions of this in a society as well as like internalized notions of respectability and who um, gets to be positioned to share their work. Um, I think I kind of summarized them, right? There's, a, there's more, I mean, it was a really complex um, uh, idea, but that's, that's what we discussed as I think perhaps we're all thinking about um, how then we position ourselves within that um, or what we notice happening around us and how to negotiate that. Um, through our practices yeah that that that's very great you know like positionality is something that <laughs> when when people first hear it like, was that is that a real word you know but it it's a real thing <laughs> and it can be felt in these spaces so appreciate that comment anybody else want to share I like what um, Takula said too about what's happening in her community, in her small community, about the, you know, all the, and it was enlightening to us, you know, with them conserving water and the fact that there's still mudslides and they're, they're still muddy in the water. I mean, who's taking on these projects and concerns that continually happen in, in her community? That was enlightening what she shared and um, what happened in her small community in Jamaica and, and how concerned and how quiet she's been because it's an emotional um, concern for her. Yes, and, and, and you know, with this session, like I said, I wanted to also respect that all of us are coming to this with different traumas, right, um, around this topic. Um, and this Hopefully it's a forum where, you know, like being a creative forum where we can express that. And, you know, it's also, if you just don't want to say anything, that's cool too. <laughs> um, anybody else care um, to share a bit? I heard a lot of like the theme that connect a lot of people's different ideas was how to use like materials and like interrogating materials. I think about like materials and how materials are like connect to a community or like the story that a material has and how that could cause somebody to like react to something in your artwork just because of the materials you use or how you transform material like someone to like copper or like I think like plastic from sandals or something like how seeing that in an artwork could change how you look at the artwork like the material or anything as a whole so I think I'm going to try to like think about that a bit more like how like any material say if it's like straw with people plat with or something like how can that be used to connect the community in a way just because like they would have their own experience with that item oh that's great that's great there's there was a, a company um that we came across at work that was using plastics to make sneakers and then they partnered with i think adidas um and pharrell and i thought that was Kind of cool. Um, anyone else? Um, is it okay if I just give a little um, tidbit on the earlier discussion about climate? Um, I had it in there in my head for so long. <laughs> um, yeah. so, oh, thank you. Yeah, actually, sorry, Precious. I saw you raised your hand. I meant to get back to you, so thank you. For that's that. fine. That's fine. It's, in, it's been in my head all this time. But, um, Personally, I'm fairly confident that we can change this whole um, climate change situation. We can, it, it can um, develop into something way better. Um, but the way we're approaching it is totally off. 
and I had this, you know, reservation in my heart for so long because we have, let's just say, for example, the straws, right? Um, people are like, oh, we need to get rid of plastic. So we're going to ban the straws. We're going to use metal straws instead, right? But think about this. What do you need to create or to create a metal straw? You're going to need heat, right? And what burns that heat? What creates that heat? Fuel. You're going to need more fuel to burn metal compared to plastic. And now it's just, we've created an even worse problem <laughs> in a different industry. It's so we're not tackling this thing correctly. I think if everyone just sits and, you know, just throws different solutions out and see which one sticks, it's not going to give a proper thing. If we, however, if we throw all the solutions and then we kind of like line them up and see which one is the best and, um, you know, the solution that, you know, costs less money and less energy, less time, we can indeed um, fix it, basically. Yeah, I love that example. Um, is it? Okay, yeah. if I get a quick response to Prussia. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm just like chiming in what Prussia said. Um, so I studied sustainable product design. Um, so that's one of the angles at which I'm like responding to this. You are spot on, thank you. Um, <laughs> in understanding that we, in any cycle of production and thinking about how we um, create things and think about solutions is how does science get in, um, like actual um, environmental impact science get involved in the assessment of how things are made. And in addition to that, that misinformation is an industry that um, has been working alongside um, climate change elimination and um, environmental security movements. And in part that has manifested in a number of things that would have things like that, like people just throwing out ideas um, and seeing one sticks without any mechanisms or assessments going on and really just adding to the flood of waste. <laughs> That's it. Oh, that's that's a great point. The the because there are people working, you know, against new narratives, and you, we see that a lot in work with the fossil fuel industry, and and even in in April last year when fuel prices went to negative numbers for the first time ever, um, we still had like oil companies saying, "Oh yeah, no, it's never going to do that. It's never going to do that." You know, mm -hmm. like and trying to. The most recent case was uh, Texas with the the blackouts in Texas saying that it was the wind turbines, but it actually was uh, antiquated um, electrical grid um, that caused the drama in Texas, but not the wind turbines itself. So it, it is about the spin and you guys have the power to spin it in a different direction. Um, I'm cognizant about time because I think we're coming up at the hour. Um, so yeah you, you said you had some comments yes i just have some sure. housekeeping housekeeping bits so when you're finished no i'm finished i just want to say thank you to all of you for for letting me uh, present this to you i know some of it was heavy um and you can also like contact you know as we go through this we'll have more opportunities to talk and i'll share these slides with you thank you so much martin i you know tremendous amount of information just remember everyone, these sessions are just designed to give you, to open your mind a little further. That's all, that's all it is, right? It is supposed to just kind of allow you to, to dream a little bigger, you know, so that your final pieces will be so much more informed. Um, we move into sessions tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon. So we're going 10 to 12 tomorrow and then one to three, that's Saturday. Then you have your day of rest and reflection on Sunday. And Monday morning, we're back about a 10 a.m. session. And then Tuesday morning, a 10.30 session. The Monday morning session, the lead facilitator has asked for you to do a little task. And I put it in the chat bar. If you can grab it out of there, please. 
she just has a little uh, assignment that she wants you all to come with. It is to produce two, to have two image, two, two bits, um, provide two examples, one each of violence and another of gender-based violence. So your example may be an image, a video clip, a verse from a song or a phrase, anything. But it's just so that you can, you know, start off the discussions with an example of violence and an example of gender-based violence. So thank you guys for participating. Great, great session today. Uh, we hope you have a, a really good rest this evening and we see you in the morning. Hold on, I have a quick one. I wasn't here for the first session. Did you guys exchange telephone numbers or anything like that? We can do that next session tomorrow morning. If you all want to Frozen. exchange numbers in the chat and stuff, that'll be good. Yeah, because I mean, I think that would be useful. I, I mean, I was, I was a part of a, a workshop recently and what we had done, everyone exchanged their numbers and started a WhatsApp group. And so even after the workshop, we're still communicating up to this day, you know? So I think that really works excellently if we can do that. And the presentations that are presented, the PowerPoints, do you share those? Are those sent out? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. We're working to have okay. those. We're going to use the Anime Kari website. Um, it's animekari.com, A-N-I-M-A-E. I'll put, I'll put the link in the chat. Um, we are working to put the videos on as well, right? So by the time, well, I can't, I can't see. Maybe, hopefully by the end of today, it should be up. But let's see what we do. Good idea, Lewis. Good idea. All right, team. Well, y'all stay safe. And um, yeah, we look forward to, to tomorrow.